Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Steve Terelmus with Expium, and we are going to be doing in the next hour our webinar, The Atlassian Enterprise Governance. It's 11 o'clock, so let's get started. 11 o'clock where I am. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. This is uh, one of many webinars that we do uh, as Expium. We do a webinar almost every Thursday at 11 a.m. So if you find this content interesting and would like to see other webinars from us, feel free to go to our website, xbm.com, or our YouTube page, and you can find other webinars that we are doing in the future or have done in the past. Today's webinar is going to be on the concept of enterprise governance utilizing Atlassian tools. And that's a mouthful. It means a lot. So I like to take some time in the beginning and kind of explain a little bit about what we're doing and what we're talking about. So what I'm going to do in this webinar is I'm going to start at the 10,000 foot level and talk a little bit about the concepts and ideas around governance using Atlassian tools or other enterprise software tools. I'm then going to drill down into uh, the ideas around governance and the important concepts of governance uh, that we really want to focus on. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you a structure and a framework of governance that we've built out utilizing Atlassian tools that you can replicate in your Atlassian instance. So if you, uh, if you want to follow along with us, you can. Um, also, if you have any questions, uh, they're going to have a Q&A session at the end. And uh, I have my email address on here, too, if you ever want to reach out to us in the future. So let's get going. First thing I want to show you is this slide of where are we going? And I, what I mean by that is where are we going specifically in this webinar? If, if you don't know where you're going in life, I, I'm not sure that this webinar is going to help you a whole lot, but at least I can guide you through the next hour and where we are going. What we're going to be doing here is talking about the governance concepts and then we're gonna drill down into how to implement those concepts into a tangible framework that can be used by you and your company. Some of the screenshots I'm showing you here on this screen are going to be right out of the Atlassian tools that I'm gonna be showing you later on in the uh, webinar. So the idea of using Atlassian within Confluent Spaces or using Atlassian within Jira projects are the actual tangible practical framework that we're gonna be demonstrating later on the webinar. So that is where we are going. Now, how do we get there? Let's, let's start at the 10,000 foot level and talk a little bit about the idea of governance. What do we mean by governance? What is good governance? Uh, what are the factors and components of good governance? And for this, I'm gonna take us all the way up to the highest levels of strategy uh, conceptual ideas that you might be talking about at an executive level with your company. So your enterprise governance, how, how is, what is enterprise governance and how does that affect you in your company? Well, the way I like to think about companies is as a rocket ship. So your company is like a rocket. It produces value and it goes places. Well, like a rocket, that's really cool and really great, but you probably need some sort of functional, practical elements of control around that rocket in order to make sure you're not going off in 100 directions. As a company's perspective, obviously you want to have good return on value. You want to have good revenue. You want to have a good employee base. You want people to be motivated. You want to have a good vision. You want people to understand what the purpose of the company is, and you also want to have some controls in that company while at the same time not hindering people from being creative and bringing their own value so that they can start to take ownership of the future value of your company and create value into that future as well, right? All of this is about what the rocket of your company is all about. And it can be a very exciting thing, especially in the last few years, we've seen some companies that have literally exploded like a rocket out into space and have become some, has had some tremendous trajectory and growth uh, in their companies. And so as we think about what we want to do to make money and grow as a company, the idea of this rocket is really fun and, and really uh, exciting. But we also want to have some thoughts around what does that mean? Uh, a great example of this is at Expium. We provide a lot of service value for Atlassian customers in the ecosystem. But on a day-to-day -day basis, as the practice lead, I have to have conversations with people around where are we spending our jet fuel in our rocket? Uh, there are probably, for every 
week that goes by, we probably have 10 great ideas that come up of which maybe one will actually be something that we have the time, people, resources, and money to implement. And so we have to be discerning about where we're gonna spend our rocket fuel and where we're gonna spend our trajectory. And how does that trajectory propel us forward and keep us from going in 10 different directions? What is the focus of our business? How do the new ideas align with our core competencies and things like that? These are all the concepts of governance that as an organization, you try to manage. And those governance ideas uh, can be kind of used as a representation of a control tower. Uh, no rocket has ever been successful in the history of space travel without a control tower riding, coming alongside of it and helping it to be successful. In our company, we need the control tower to help us with key ideas of collaboration and value, like aligning strategies across multiple divisions. We assume that we hire good, smart, and valuable people. So we can then further assume as our different divisions are working that these people are gonna be coming up with creative and uh, ideas for our rocket. And we need to make sure that there's some sort of overview and visibility around that so that we can align those strategies and make sure that we're not creating divergent strategies that are cannibalizing our value or pulling our value in different directions. Improving processes. So one of the hardest things to do is convert people and their ideas into efficient processes. And one of the best things that the control tower can do in this particular analogy is build out and capture those processes. It's only the control tower that's gonna be able to identify the standard processes versus the customized processes that your teams are gonna to need to use. And then also maybe providing efficiency. How can we do things faster? How can we communicate faster? How can people see things more easily? All of these things and many, many more are areas where the control tower is critical to the maximum value, efficiency, and strength of the rocket. So let's talk a little bit about what this control tower can do. I've kind of built together a fun little acronym for our control tower that spells out the word rocket, but really it actually does a really nice job of capturing what we want our enterprise governance to do. First of all, we want it to be representative. Uh, governance is not going to be successful if it's limited in power and it's not representative by the people that are actually making your company great. You have to have the, the conversations. You have to have the people who are working in the day-to-day -day operations of your company being able to speak into the processes and the leadership of governance. You very well may want to also have those people representative as governing people in your governing bodies as well. We're gonna talk about that as we get further down to the ground level around this concept of governance. Openness. So openness is probably one of the most valuable and critical elements of the framework around your governance. And the idea of openness is anyone in your company should be able to see and know what's happening in governance. They should be able to know who the governing bodies are. They should be able to see the policies very quickly. They, if they have a question or need to raise a concern around governance, they should be able to not only do that efficiently and visibly, but know how to do that. Be able to find the pathway for doing that. Be able to track that with open, openness and visibility once they have submitted the request. Openness is going to be the single thing that I think that's gonna be the most important thing for your governance. Coordination. Coordination is the ability of multiple people to work together. Let's suppose you've got an Atlassian instance of 5,000 users and one person wants to buy an add-on. What is the coordination of that governance request across your ecosystem? And how is that coordination promoted by the control tower that is supposed to be managing and promoting good governance? Knowledge. What do people know, right? Do you, are you building a governance body or a governance team of people that understand how to write a check for a piece of software, understand executive management, but have no idea about the knowledge of the product for which they are working, right? We want our governance framework to include people that are knowledgeable in the product as well. E stands for expertise. And the key point here is we want people that are not only knowledgeable in the product, but have the, have the very important expertise of knowing how the product can practically apply to your day-to-day -day operations, to your value. This is kind of that classic difference between knowing, uh, knowing a piece of information and knowing how to apply that information. There's the old adage of knowing that a tomato is a fruit is a piece of knowledge 
but wisdom is knowing not to put a tomato in a fruit salad. And that's the difference between knowledge and expertise. And we need both in our framework. And then finally, teamwork. So if you know anything about Atlassian, you know that their open stock ticker symbol is T-E-A-M, team, because they intentionally want to identify their company as a company that supports teamwork. And so in our framework for promoting good governance, before we even start to build anything out, we want to make sure that we are promoting those ideas of teamwork, especially in Atlassian tools, because the very tools are built to promote teamwork and in the work and the documentation and conversations that you're having. So your enterprise governance is going to be a framework that is promoting all six of these ideas, representation, openness, coordination, knowledge, expertise, and teamwork. That's the 10,000 foot level. That's where we're going to. How do we make that a practical application in your ecosystem? First thing we wanna talk about anytime we're trying to drive an idea down to the practical level is what is your vision? The vision is going to be the path to get us to where we wanna go. So the vision for governance, or in this case, good governance, is to ensure an ongoing balance between enterprise goals and enterprise growth via flexible controls managed directly by the employees who best understand the purpose and value of Atlassian products across the organization. If you're going to put together a governance structure, you need to write a governance vision statement. It can be this one, you're welcome to borrow it, or it can be one that you come up on the, with on your own, but you're gonna need one because people are gonna ask, what's the point of governance? What are we trying to do with it? Notice a couple of the words that I used in this particular vision statement, flexible controls. We want our governance not to be rigid, directed by the employees. We want our governance not to be heavy handed or top down. Obviously part of the governance structure will be those people that we need there to write the check, people that have the check writing power to purchase a $5,000 app or to purchase a million dollar software product. But we also want it to be directed by the employees, why that person is writing a check and how many of the employees are gonna benefit once that check is written is gonna be directly related to how well your vision has successfully been implemented for having that governance managed by your employees. Also notice the balance. We want a balance between goals and growth. We want the, this is the idea of as the rocket goes, the framework of the control tower is going to try to provide that balance. And of course, we're trying to do this with people who understand the purpose and value. That's that knowledge, openness, expertise that we talked about in the previous slide. How about our purpose? What is the purpose of governance? The governance purpose is going to be a body that will support the creation, discussion, decision, and implementation of Atlassian products, apps, components, and configuration. That's a mouthful that really boils down into two areas, the activities and the elements of our governance uh, process. The activities being things like, what are the discussions that we do? What is the work we do? What is the creation of the elements, which is around the products, the apps, the components, the configuration. One might even say the users, right? This is going to be much more than just purchasing Jira. One of the things that I really struggle with when I work with customers is helping them to understand how holistic their Atlassian, at, uh, their Atlassian ecosystem is. To understand that Jira is a great tool is only part of what you need to know. What about the 3,000 applications that are available in the marketplace? Which ones are valuable for you? How should you buy them? Which ones do you need versus not need? What about the components in the, in the structure and configuration? What part of that should be standardized across all projects? What part of that should be customized? As you get into the Atlassian uh, ecosystem, the JIRA product in particular is intentionally designed for people who understand the difference between standardization and customization. Every single project in JIRA is built the same way. It's built on the same framework, whether it's a business product uh, project for, uh, for, for teams like accounting or for uh, risk management or for HR, or it's a software project for teams that are building your, uh, your DevOps teams or your prod product teams, or if it's a service desk project for teams that are managing facility requests or for managing IT service requests. Every single project in JIRA is built on the same framework. What do we need to do? How do we need to get it done? And what do we need? What data do we need to capture that in order to complete that or to report on it later? 
If I were to show you, and I'll show you a slide of this later on, the, gov uh, the framework of projects in JIRA, you will see that that framework is standardized and it uses every single, it's used in every single product or project that we build. However, of course, not every project is different and not every work piece is different, right? So don't be uh, terrified by the fact that we use the same framework because the beauty of JIRA is that that framework is flexible in how it is portrayed for your project. For example, in JIRA, every issue type has to follow a workflow. That is standard. How that workflow looks, what, what statuses are in that workflow, what transitions are in that workflow, what rules are in that transitions in those workflow, that's the flexible part. Those workflows are going to be in every single project you have, whether it's accounting or DevOps or IT service desk. But what the statuses and transitions are in those workflows will probably be very different. Understanding that when you get into the components and configuration is going to be very important for the governing body. That's why we talked about earlier when we talked about the rocket, we want really strong representation for people that have a good understanding of the products as well. And we'll talk about that a lot more when we get into how do you structure your governing body. Okay, governance vision, governance purpose. Think about these things before you implement a governing practice. This next slide is going to take us a little bit further down to the ground level. We're probably around 5,000 feet yet. We're not dealing with tools. We're not dealing with actions. We're dealing with components and goals. So what are some of the components and goals of a governing structure? Well, the goals of a governing structure in the middle of this diagram, scalable growth, visible control, user ownership, and knowledge sharing. If your governing process is accomplishing these four things, you have a successful governance framework that is really going to do a lot to empower your rocket. If you're not encompassing some of these things, you wanna drill in and start thinking about them. Scalable growth, what kind of frameworks are we putting out there that are going to allow us to continue to grow? As you expand your footprint of the software across your enterprise, it should be easier and more efficient every time you do it because you've built a process that's scalable. Visible control, the control is going to be there. It has to be there to keep the rocket from crashing, but it also has to be visible. How visible is the control mechanisms that you have? Everyone that is involved in your Atlassian tools or other software tools should be able to see and know where to go to see the actual control mechanisms that are in place. User ownership, this goes back to that idea of representation. Everybody that is in the tools themselves should not only be able to see things, but they should know how can we influence things. If I am an expert in the tool, uh, I should also be somebody that may be involved in the governance processes. And then knowledge sharing. How do we promote the ideas across the company? Don't forget, some of the governance processes we're going to be implementing are for companies that have 5,000 to 10,000 users. There is no way that that knowledge is going to be in one area. We need to figure out how to float that knowledge up so it can then be distributed across multiple departments. There should be no time where somebody is purchasing an add-on for your company and 10 different divisions have to send somebody off to learn how to use that add-on at 10 different times. Once somebody learns how to use that add-on, that knowledge needs to be manifest and made visible so that the other nine divisions that eventually use that can very quickly go and find that information and be able to use what's already been built as a foundation to continue to grow and be more efficient because of the knowledge sharing. So those are our goals. These are things we really want to see happening. At any point in time when you're having conversations around governance on your day-to-day -day activities, come back to these goals as a motivation and a reason for why we might need to change things or improve things or start things. What are the components that included in governance? Well, I've got several bubbles here, but they're basically broken out into two groups. One group is products and the other group is activities. So across the top of the products, so let's start with uh, Confluence. Confluence is the documentation tool and knowledge portal for Atlassian. It's being used more and more, especially as companies are implementing Atlassian's ITSM suite for service management and using Confluence as a knowledge-based tool that helps to avert or resolve issues that are coming in for customers. What are your governing policies and structures around the Confluence tool? Here's a great example. I'm gonna show you later on in this webinar, a, gov a Confluence governance space. Which spaces in your Confluence instance are broad spaces that are open and visible to everybody in your company versus those spaces that are limited and may be only available to a project team? That's governance for Confluence. JIRA governance. 
I could go, I could talk for hours about JIRA governance. There are so many factors in JIRA that need a healthy governance structure around them. I'll just give you one example. How many admins do you have as a ratio to your users? These are your cooks in the kitchen, right? Do you have enough cooks in the kitchen or do you not have enough cooks in the kitchen? And you can err on one side or the other. Most of the time I see people that have too many cooks in the kitchen. And the reason why is because JIRA is a very expansive tool. It gets expanded across other groups. And before you know it, you've got a lot of admins out there that are, are, are stepping on each other's toes and your database is a, is a hot mess. But you could ha also have the opposite happening. I also see companies that fail to support admins by not having enough admins so that there's a large backlog of requests and the admins can barely keep on, touch on top of the requests, much less make sure that one request that they're doing is not in conflict with another or violating a standard of structure or make sure that the request can be implemented in an efficient way. This request is coming in. Have we already solved this problem with another division or another group within the company? If you don't have enough admins and you're actually utilizing admins in a large instance that have another job as well and can't focus on JIRA, you're going to be making the mistake of having a lot of redundancies, duplicative activities, mistakes, and things like that because you don't have a strong enough admin group to manage that. Uh, source control governance. So you have Bitbucket and other source control tools. What's the governance around that? Who's managing your repos? Who has, who has particular permissions around your repos? Uh, portfolio tools. So Atlassian has a wealth of portfolio tools, including uh, scrum boards, advanced roadmaps, Jira line. There's a lot of activities out there and there's quite a few add-ons in the marketplace like big picture and agile and agile add-ons that you can bring in for teams and team of team activities around portfolio management. How are you managing your portfolio tools? At what level in your organization are your portfolio tools being applied? All of these are important governance concepts around these tools that you need to discuss and, and talk about. Okay, down at the bottom, what are some of the activities around governance? So what are the Atlassian governing bodies that are out there? How many do you have? How do they relate to each other? How do they communicate and liaison from the top down and from the, down, and from the bottom up? Atlassian best practices. How do you capture those best practices in the tools? What is a good standard workflow? How many statuses should a good standard workflow have? Something like that. How are those best practices being captured and disseminated across your organization? Governing bodies. What are the governing bodies that you have? Uh, so what, what are the types of rules that you have and how are those bodies managed, managed by people? Atlassian governance framework tools. What is the framework using? So I'm showing you guys a bunch of slides right now. That's great. And that's a good way to motivate people to understand what good governance is. But that's not going to help you on a day-to-day -day basis. If somebody wants to build a project, they can't come to my slide deck to figure out how do I build a project? How many issue types do I need? Which workflows are standard? Which ones aren't? How many fields do I need? That's the framework that you need. The framework out there is going to be the ground level uh, tools that are available for people to actually implement and manage governance well. And then how-to articles. Somebody buys an add-on and implements that add-on for their team. Why not have them write a how-to article that they can put out into the governing framework so that other people can then come in later and, and learn from what they've done. Okay, so those are your goals and your components. Again, the goals are great for high level conversations around governance. How is this element that we're talking about affecting scalable growth? How is it promoting user ownership? Those are, that's what you wanna use the goals for. Components is a framework around the actual tools and activities that you should see in your governance. A good healthy governance structure will include all of these bubbles around the outside, especially for all the products that you're managing. Okay, so we're getting down closer and closer to the ground level. Let's take a look now at what the ground level is going to look like. So the ground level is going to be comprised of three primary governing pillars. The first one is going to be your governing structure. Okay, this is going to be the idea of how is your governance structured. The second one is your governance framework. This is what is the framework your governance is using. And the third one is your governance policies. And this is going to be the, the control aspects and the policies around your governance. Let me talk about each of these a little bit more. So governance structure, practically speaking, are going to be the people and the governing bodies that are having governance conversations and making governance decisions. The governance framework is going to be the tool whereby those people operate and also all the other people that are using the software, all your users. The governance policies are going to be the, the road mark, uh, the benchmarks and in, in the, in the road signs and the framework around uh, the activities that you want to do in the tool. We do not want to do this in any of our projects. 
or if we are going to implement a confluent space. These are the steps that have to happen before that confluent space is implemented, okay? Governance pillars. Then I, the next thing I'm gonna do, and for the remaining 20 or so minutes of this webinar, is I'm gonna actually get into the tool itself, and I'm gonna show you how you can take this theoretical concept of governance that we've been talking about, kind of from the 5,000 foot level down to the 1,000 foot level, and really implement a solid ground level framework around that that can be used within your company. Before I do that though, let me tell you a little bit more about why you're listening to somebody from a company called Expium instead of Atlassian. So I have this conversation every time I talk to a new client. I am Steve Terelmas, the practice lead at Expium. I am not working for Atlassian. Atlassian does not pay my salary. However, the tools you're using are Atlassian tools. So what's the difference? Well, Atlassian has been around for 15 or 20 years. They make fantastic tools. But from early on, they decided that they wanted to focus a lot on the software and have the strategic and the tactical implementation of their software managed through a network of partners. So at this point in time, there's about 250,000 companies around the world that use Atlassian tools, and there's about 3,000 apps in the Atlassian marketplace. There's about 500 Atlassian partners around the world. Now, not all partners are the same. Some partners just focus on building apps for the marketplace. Some partners just focus on licensing. Um, the partners that Expium is a part of are the ones that focus on strategic solutions primarily. So that has varying levels. The highest level is a platinum solutions partner. In order to do that, you have to have a number of people that are certified and you have to have demonstrated that you have been able to manage licenses and customer needs in consulting over a certain breadth of customers. Here at Expium, all of our consultants are certified. We are the only partner in the marketplace where everybody you talk to on the Expium side will be certified in Atlassian tools. We are probably one of the, out of the 500 partners around the country, uh, around the world, there are only about 20 platinum partners in the country of which we are one. We're a full service Atlassian partner. That means that we can do all of these things I'm showing you on the screen. We can license your products for you at no additional cost to you. That's an important thing. I'll come back to that later. We can provide training for you. Webinars like this is an example of one of the trainings we do, but we also have full classes that we do ranging from half day to three day. We can do consulting for you, which can include, hey, I need to build out a governance framework. Hey, I've never used the tools before. I need to build out some projects. We need to take the Atlassian tools we've, we've used and we need to scale them into a full uh, Agile at scale platform solution and that sort of thing. If you are doing anything in the Atlassian ecosystem, you need to talk to a partner first. I will have a conversation with you, no cost to you. I will understand and talk to you a little bit about where you're going. And then we'll talk about some of the services that we can provide. You may choose to use those services or not. Those services may be more expensive than your budget can afford or not. I, I don't care about that. What I do care about is that you are on the right trajectory and that you've talked to somebody that's been there before and seen other customers do that before you launch off into something, particularly in the area of licensing. A lot of people assume that it's best to license directly with Atlassian because they license directly with other software companies. In the Atlassian ecosystem, Atlassian wants to build a strong relationship between partners and Atlassian and therefore provides the opportunity for the partners to license to customers at the same cost as Atlassian does. And oftentimes it might even be more uh, or cheaper than it would be to license directly with Atlassian. I won't go into how that's possible. It really has to do with the, with the relationship between Atlassian and the partners. Here's the bottom line though. If you are licensing with Atlassian tools and you are not talk, talking to a partner or working with a partner, I guarantee you, you're, you're leaving value and dollars on the table. And you need, to, you need to reach out to a partner and at least have a conversation about why that is. Feel free to call me sometime. You've got my email earlier in this presentation. I'll show it to you later on the end. I just don't like to see customers spending too much money on their licenses when they don't have to, or not knowing that the renewal's coming up because nobody warned them, or not being able to get a budgetary quote for their license or anything. We can do all of that with no service charge to you whatsoever. Okay, so that's who we are. That's what we do. Um, and please reach out to us if you have any needs. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the actual tool itself. So the rest of the webinar, I'm going to show you some of the ideas that we have done to build out this governance framework. All right. First thing I always like to do is start off in, um, start off in confluence. So Atlassian has two great tools to manage work that we do. Confluence and Jira. Jira is the tool that manages actions for teams. 
Confluence is the content portal where we see information. Again, the great thing about Confluence is it doesn't have to be just a documentation tool. It can be a content portal. Like if you look at this page I'm showing you here, most of the information on this page is, is, not, con is not documentation. It's not words. It's links to other things, right? So that's, that's what's really beautiful about Confluence. Okay, so this is our Confluence governance space. First thing I want to mention is that if I have a um, if I have an enterprise with a rocket that's trying to create value and that enterprise has got several hundred or several thousand employees that are using Atlassian tools, this space is going to be open to all of them. This is going to be a public space across my organization. I even want people who are not involved in Atlassian tools to be able to see this. Why? Because Atlassian is going to grow in your organization. And as it grows, the first thing people are going to want to ask is, what is this thing Atlassian? It's a great thing to put on your governance page. Are you interested in Atlassian tools for your team? Here is a great place to start. Here is a video to watch. Here is how a Atlassian project is set up. If you're going to work with an admin to build a project for your team for the first time, these are the questions the admin's going to ask you, and this is how you should answer them, right? All of this stuff is a entry point for people that aren't even in Atlassian to have a successful an efficient entry into utilizing the Atlassian tools in your organization. And a little neat trick, that means that you are already starting to motivate the proper governance for them right from the beginning before they've even started using the tools. You're pointing them to the governance tool for information. You're showing them the governance structures and policies that you have in place. So you're already acclimating them to, to the good governance processes that you've implemented. So our Confluence space is going to be open to everybody. And then on there, we're going to have the information that people need to know around governance. So first of all, right at the front page, we're going to tell them why we're doing this. This is the purpose of governance. We're also going to give them some high-level conceptual ideas. Uh, some of these I've showed you, to, showed you already. Uh, we're also going to maybe have some links to articles. Uh, here's one. Here, Click here for our latest YouTube governance video. Uh, by the way, if this concepts of governance is something that you're more interested in, this link on this page actually will take you right to XVM's YouTube page where we have a governance series of videos. And so if you want to learn more about this, this YouTube XVM page has all of these videos you can watch. By the way, these videos came from a series of um, uh, series of of uh, webinars, not webinars, but series of, of, of things that we did around the country with Atlassian and Google, uh, where we had forums in different countries that we went to over a period of two years, and we uh, talked about governing ideas among uh, XBM, Atlassian, and Google. We uh, interviewed people, and, and we recorded all of that, and then we took some of the best recordings and we put it on here. So that's what this is. But um, having something like that on your homepage is great, um, and if you want, if you want to view that at some point, you can you can just go to YouTube and type in XBM, and it's one of our playlists there. Um, but having that here is a really great way to capture people's attention right away on governing ideas that you've implemented. Maybe you might want to have a link that says "New to Atlassian," click here. "New to Atlassian governance," click here. Things like that. Okay, let's jump down into a little bit more information. Let's talk about governance structures. So governance structures is one of those three pillars I mentioned. This is the framework of how your governing body is structured so that you have the right people in place in order to have good governance. I'm going to take a look at this diagram right here. This is an example of a good governance uh, framework, uh, but you don't have to do it this way. Uh, people's framework around governance may vary depending on how small or big you are. If you're a smaller uh, group of, of Atlassian users, you may only need one governing body. If you're a medium size, like a couple of thousand people, you may want to have three like this. If you're bigger, you may want to break this into a hub and spoke system where you have a governing body like this broke in, in several, replicated in several places around your company based on your divisional functional structure in the company. It's up to you. But the idea here is that you're going to have the following bodies or activities happening. Here at the top, I've got Atlassian Steering Committee. These are the people that are going to make final decisions around governance and are probably going to be the people that write the check. Uh, some of the things that are going to be doing in here is governance management, purchasing, communication, and response with the other governance groups. The people that are going to be in here are probably going to be limited, may only be three or four people. You'll probably have your executive sponsors in here. You might have a couple of vice presidents in here. If you have somebody that is like your head admin for the Atlassian tools, they'll probably be in here as well. Okay. Then you're going to have down here two other groups, a Atlassian system admin group and Atlassian product admin group. The reason why I differentiate between these two groups is because there is an important difference between them. 
One of them is going to be function uh, is going to be focusing on system activities that need governance. The other is going to be focusing on the governance around the products themselves. Let me explain a little bit more what I mean there. So system activities. Uh, this might be the um, the user or communication software. For example, if you're using Slack for open chat in your in your company and you want to connect Slack to Atlassian tools, that might be something that requires the attention of the system admin group. OK, uh, if you have users that need to be brought in, you probably are connecting your users to something like a Active Directory or something like that. You're going to need the system admin group to help with that. Uh, things like security and compliance. If you're on a software as a, uh, a service, a SaaS platform, a cloud platform, you may need to work with your security and compliance teams, your InfoSec teams. Right. Their whole job is in Atlassian tools. They've got plenty of other cloud tools that they have to manage. Right. But they may have, they may need to have a liaison from the InfoSec team or the security team that is representative in the Atlassian system admin group. So as you can tell, this green box, the system admin group, <clears throat> is probably going to be a very broad collection of people. And there's going to be a select amount of those people that are going to need to be involved in the conversations that come up. It's not likely that every conversation that comes up around governance is going to have to be inclusive of everybody that's in the Atlassian system admin group, right? If we're talking about security and compliance, we may or may not necessarily need to have our email admin there, right? So that's kind of uh, something that we manage. And we're going to utilize the action items on the Jira side of the world to define who needs to be in the conversation when that conversation needs to happen. Okay, let's flip over to the uh, purple side, the product admin side. This is going to be the governing body that manages the products themselves. Once the products are implemented in your, in your platform, once the users have been added, everything having to do with the products themselves are going to be governed by the product admin group. How the product's configured, what type of software do we have in there? For example, if you've got Jira, how many add-ons do you have? How many users do you need in Jira? What does a basic standard project look like in Jira? What's a standard workflow look in Jira? Uh, what is the permission schemes that we use within the tools themselves? Okay, so those concepts of the actual functional framework of the tool itself, the product itself, as it's being used, what parts of that are standard, what parts of that are customized, that's going to be the conversations that are going to be happening on the product admin side. The people in this group is probably going to be a smaller quantity of number than you're going to have in the system admin side, but they're probably going to be more frequently working together because they're going to be always talking about uh, issues that affect all of them. Down at the bottom, this blue box, I've labeled that project managers, product managers, or development managers. Really, that's just intended to mean the rest of the user ecosystem that's using the Atlassian tools. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be a scrum master. It could be an agile coach. Somebody that has a significant amount of information. Let's suppose you hire a new Agile coach, and this Agile coach has been working for another company that has been using Atlassian tools for thousands of more people than you have, and he has a deep technical understanding of the tool as well. Why not bring him into your governing body as a, as a product admin group governing person? Because he has a really good understanding of the synergy of the tools across multiple groups, right? So he could be in there. So this lower box is going to be information that's coming up to the governing bodies and going down from the governing bodies. It's also going to be the people. So if you're wondering, how are we, how are we going to people the people in uh, the, 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 the folks that are going to be in these three triangles? Who are they going to be? And where are they going to come from? They're going to come from the people that are using the tool every day because we want grassroots governance. And so that's the idea. And of course, there's going to be liaisons between them. Now, one of the things I'm going to talk about later on is this sounds like a lot of extra meetings. This sounds like weekly meetings. This sounds like a lot of time on my calendar. Well, the uh, activities and decisions that we need to do, if we manage them appropriately in JIRA, which I'll show you in a little bit, we may not even need to have any meetings. Uh, again, our structure for governance is going to be completely open and visible. So why have meetings if you can see all the actions real time? You can see everything that's, every, that's happening. You can have communication on every single item that's happening. You may not need to have meetings at all. So we're going to talk about that a little bit when we get to the action side of the world. Okay, let me back up. So the different structure is going to be these governing bodies. Again, you don't have to do it exactly that way. It's just some ideas. Let's talk about how we're going to represent openly the governance structure to anybody that comes to this governance space. First thing we're going to do is tell them what the purpose and the structure is of each of these governing bodies. We're going to also tell them who the members are. We're not going to keep it a secret. Eric, Susan, Daniel, Monique, right? 
maybe there is uh, maybe there is one of these people that you know and you have a problem, you can go and talk to them at lunch or something, right? Um, also, we are actually going to maybe need from time to time to have new members come and, and old members leave the group. And so this little thing that you're seeing right here is actually a link back to a ticket in JIRA where we're using a governance ticket in JIRA to do a voting process to see if John Smith should be the next person to join the steering committee. And I'll show you that a little bit later when we get into JIRA. Also, we might have some meeting notes that are down here. Uh, every time the ASC meets, we might want to capture those notes and put them out there for people to read. The product admin group, again, this is the governing body that manages the actual products itself. What's standard? What's customized? How do you set up a project in JIRA, right? Again, purpose, structure, people. We want that all to be openly visible, meeting notes. Uh, a little bit further down, we've got the system admin group. Again, purpose, structure, people. We want to know what's going on there, right? And then down here, we might have a decision log. As these governing bodies meet, have conversations, as tickets flow through the process, it, as when, when large decisions or important decisions are made, maybe we want to capture those and put them out on some kind of decision log or something like that. Okay, so that's your governing structure. That is the people, and that is how they are represented in Confluence. So anybody that wants to know what are our governing bodies, who are the people in the governing bodies, how can I get involved in a governing body, they know how to do that and how to get there. The next thing is going to be the policies and standards. So those three pillars I talked about, uh, the framework, uh, the policies, uh, this is the policies and standards. So for example, what are the policies and standards that we do for administrators? What are the policies and standards for all users? What are our policies that are currently in progress? If there have been certain policies that have been established, perhaps we want to capture them as we've captured these diagrams here. For example, this is a policy of how we do a JIRA project setup. If your team that wants to build a project, the admin is going to be asking you these questions and you need to be able to answer them for the admin in order to build the project. This, by the way, is the standard framework that is on every single project in JIRA. It doesn't matter what your projects look like when you're looking at them from a user perspective. If you drill down into it, you will see this framework with these elements in every single project in JIRA. That's why it's really important for the governing body to understand how that works, because every project they built is, in this framework, going to be built the same way. Now, again, like workflow, right? How many workflows are in your project? Well, that's up to the team. What do those workflows look like? Again, that's up to the team. Are they using a standard workflow or a customized workflow? That's up to the team. But do workflows exist in your project? Yes, it's a standard element of every project. Okay, so that's some uh, information around uh, policies and standards, and then you might have some things around There's some examples like for administrators, how do we archive projects, how do we do integrations, things like that. Uh, you might also have some policies and standards for users. This is a great place to have information for users, right? Uh, what are our policies around workflows? If a team wants to build a JIRA project and they're going to come to us and ask, I need to build a JIRA project. Well, before we even have a conversation, it might be worthwhile to give them some information around what our policies around workflows. We do not have workflows that have more than 20 statuses because usually that means that you need a nested workflow. It's basically like a, having a run on sentence. It's just bad grammar in the Atlassian world, right? So these may be some policies that you wanna put in place. Okay, and then of course, policies in progress might be an important one as well. And so this is actually, which is really neat about this, if you look at this, is, and this is what I love about Confluence, this page has no content on it whatsoever. It's just a macro that is grabbing a filter out of JIRA that is grabbing all the active policies that are in progress in JIRA right now. So pretty cool stuff. All right, so we talked about governance structure. We talked about policies and standards. Uh, some other things you might have on your Confluence space is how-to articles. Things about add-ons, Zephyr, how to use Zephyr, you know, thing, how to work with files and images, right? If you're implementing a governance structure right now in your organization, you might want to put into the governance space the roadmap for that implementation so people can see what is all this stuff happening with the governance? What am I, why am I hearing all this governance stuff? And when is it going to be done? And what are we working on now? And you could actually build that out in a roadmap. Everything that is, <clears throat> everything that is being done is going to be captured as actions in JIRA. You can, you can uh, bring all those actions into a roadmap, and you can pull a roadmap into a Confluence page. All right, so this is the informational side of governance at the, at the ground level, right? Anytime somebody wants to know about governance, they come to this space. Anytime you need to have announcements or policies around governance, you can have them here in this 
space. Now, let me spend a little bit of time talking about the actions around governance and how we actually take care of activities on a day-to-day -day basis in, uh, in governance. Okay, start with this one here. What you're seeing here is a governance project in JIRA. If you are familiar with JIRA, you know that every project lives in the same place. This is, this is the beauty of JIRA. I get into this <clears throat> all the time. If I go to my projects here, you, oops, okay. Well, it's got a little bit of a lag here, but let me pull, there we go. Okay, what you're seeing here are business projects. You're seeing service management projects. You're seeing software projects. Uh, software teams, uh, initiative projects, engagement projects. Here's our governance project, right? The beauty of JIRA is that it's not about uh, the diversity. It's about everybody's doing work. Everybody's coming into work every day doing stuff. That's being captured as actions and managed across teams and can be reflected here for people to view or act on or to collaborate on. For example, once the governance project establishes that we're going to build an add-on, maybe there's an action for one of the software teams to implement an add-on. And so we, we create a JIRA issue out of the resolution that the governance project has said, we're going to buy this software. Once we buy it, we are going to actually, it's, we are going to create a purchase order in the accounting project. And once that purchase order has been done and it gets purchased, then we are going to go down to Sys, uh, scale team beta and they're going to implement the add-on for us, right? Three different teams in three different projects in JIRA, all of it connected and collaborated together. So this is, this is some of the incredible stuff you can do in, in JIRA. Okay, so let me go to the governance page. So here is a list of possible open activities that are happening. We've got maybe a, a purchase item of a ticket, of a particular add-on. We are trying to implement a dev platform. We already have a prod platform and we need to implement a dev platform. So that's an issue that's being discussed. Uh, Reveal for Confluence is a Confluence tool that the team wants, right? Um, here's the um, voting item for the uh, Atlassian Steering Committee governing body, John Smith, right? So as I look at these different things, these are action items in JIRA. I can create fields around them. I can, like for John Smith, I can have a voting thing, right? There's a voting field right in JIRA. We can have people vote for John Smith. As I manage the uh, implementation of a dev platform, I can communicate on, on the comments in the ticket itself between myself and the, and the platform management team, right? Uh, let me show you an example of a workflow in this here. We won't go too far down at the weeds here, but I think there's a, um, there's a great uh, example here of workflows that we can show. So let me go to issues and click the issues. Come on, let's just go to types. Okay, so here are like the different issues that might exist. For example, I have annual policies, nomination, policy change, purchase change, system request, user. These are all different issues that might come up. You can add others if you want. This is just an example of some. Let's take a quick look at one of these workflows. Let's suppose that uh, you've got a thousand users in your instance. Those thousand users are broken off across business teams, service management teams, software teams. But you know, as an admin, that if somebody wants to buy an admin, an add-on, you have to pay for that add-on for all thousand users. So Bob in one of the agile teams across 10 different agile teams across a thousand other users wants to purchase an add-on. He knows that he can't purchase the add-on without going through the governance process. So what does he do? Well, first of all, he comes into the governance project. He clicks create. He creates an issue for the add-on that he wants to purchase. That issue begins uh, the life cycle. So here's a user product request workflow. So the first thing that happens is that Bob creates the request. Now everybody can see that Bob wants this request. Instantly, a thousand people out there have access to see that. The governing bodies can have a filter that says, show me all the new requests that have been opened within the last week. Or anytime a new request is open in the governance, uh, send me an email, right? So everybody and anybody can now see that Bob wants this add-on. The next thing that happens is that maybe Bob needs to do some research. So people see that the ticket's been created, but maybe there's not a lot of information on the ticket. Maybe Bob wants to pull together a one-pager that describes what the add-on can do, how much it costs, and what the value is. And then he puts that one-pager or the link to that into the ticket, right? He's got the one-pager in the confluence, maybe in the governance uh, space, and then he connects that confluence link to that one pager into the JIRA ticket in the research status. So now anybody that sees that can see what Bob wrote about that add-on. 
The next thing you're gonna do is gather interest. We don't want Bob, one of a thousand users, coming to the governing body and asking, hey, can I purchase this add-on? If we did, the governing body would be meeting 24 hours a day, right? We want Bob, as the person who wants to purchase this add-on, to maybe do a little legwork around it. Maybe he wants to go to his Agile team. He's got 10 people on his Agile team. That right there will get him a certain, a greater percentage of the people interested in his product. He convinces them. Some of those people know people from other Agile teams. Pretty soon there's 100 people on, on various Agile teams that are interested in this product. Now you have 10% of your users that not only know about this add-on are interested in it. Maybe they, they then go to other people and you're, and you're able to get other people on service teams or business teams that are interested as well. Maybe you can use the voting structure on the JIRA ticket to trigger an automation that as soon as it hits 200 votes, it gets put into the queue of the backlog for the governance team to discuss. Once it does that, Bob comes to the governance team and presents it, or maybe he doesn't need to present it. If we don't wanna have a bunch of governance meetings, maybe the governance team says 200 people want this, Bob has put together a one pager, we can read it, we can make a vote. Don't forget, many of the people in the governance team are probably already gonna be the people that Bob's talked to. So they already know about it because we're grassroots in our governance. So the governance team is going to be represented by users and many of them may even be part of these agile teams. So they might just rubber stamp it. I've already talked to Bob about this. As after that position, maybe it's decided we're gonna put it on hold. We think this is a great add-on, but we're gonna be doing an initiative in the company that might disrupt this. Let's put this on hold for six months. Maybe we decide, no, it doesn't have enough uh, value. We already have an add-on that Bob doesn't know about that does the same thing. Again, because we have open knowledge, we've been able to figure this out. So we're gonna close this. Already at this point, we've created value because if, John or Jessica in a year from now decides they want the same add-on before they go back here and create the ticket, they're gonna do a filter search for that add-on and they're gonna find the old closed ticket at which point they have to do a little bit of research to decide has anything changed since we closed this before? That would, that would really put me in a position of maybe reopening this ticket or opening a new ticket for the same add-on. Okay, let's assume that it gets approved. It then goes to purchasing. This could be a completely separate nested workflow that gets sent over to the accounting project that I showed you earlier, uh, a purchasing workflow. And it just sits here waiting for the purchase to be completed. And in the ticket itself, it's linked to the accounting purchasing ticket. So anybody can see the accounting purchasing ticket and what status it's in. Once it's purchased, it then needs to be configured. We might need to bring in our system admin governance group to manage the, the configuration of the particular add-on. After it's configured, we want some good documentation, how-to articles that we can put on our governance space. Who better to do that than our champion, Bob? We'll have Bob use his one pager as a documentation or create a new one. How to implement this app into your JIRA project, something like that, and then it gets closed. This entire process has accomplished all of the goals that we were talking about with governance before. It has created open visibility. It has created knowledge sharing. It has created scalability. Every one of our governance goals is being managed by this process. And it is also creating user empowerment as well. Bob is not frustrated at any point in this process because he doesn't know what the next step is. He doesn't know where the issue is in the process. He doesn't know who to talk to. He knows all of those things and he can see all those things. He doesn't even need to go and talk to somebody. He can just text them or chat them a link to the ticket that, he's, that, that he needs to promote. Okay. We can go on and on about these concepts and ideas and individual examples. I just wanted to give you one really good example of how this can really practically be successful. Here's another concept. Once you've built this out, start building visualization around it. Here's a governance dashboard. So this governance dashboard represents a series of gadgets that are going to be capturing open visibility for people to see what's happening in the governance project. All of these are things. And as if you know anything about dashboards, you know that each of these gadgets are representative of links. So if I wanna look at my nomination, I just can click on my nomination and it takes me right into the nomination ticket of John Smith, right? So lots of open visibility. The sky is the limit as far as how you wanna represent this. Okay, so JIRA for actions, confluence for content, right? That's the starting point. And then from there, build out your pillars which are going to be, um, we want a structure, which is gonna be Confluence and JIRA. We want, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we want a framework, which is gonna be Confluence and JIRA. We want a structure, which is going to be our governing bodies, the number of governing bodies we need, the people that need to be in there. And then we want policies. That's a great starting place to go. 
And then from there, just it's a live and dynamic real-time tool that just keeps iterating and iterating uh, in the way that, that Jira does best. Okay, so we are about five minutes before the top of the hour. I did want to stop with just enough time in case there was any particular questions around this. I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, the goal of this webinar is really not to solve your problems. It is to give you a value proposition with some great ideas that you can either take on your own and build out, or you can think about and then maybe come back to us in the future. My last slide here has got my email again, QR code, and also upcoming webinars again. We have webinars every Thursday at 11 a.m. We also have other marketing events that we do that are fantastic marketing events like Cloud Migration Workshop, where we build out a workbook talking about assessments for apps and, and budget and timeline around a, uh, an Atlassian cloud migration. Check out xbm.com or our website for all of those marketing activities. Let me get some of your questions before we wrap up here today. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, okay, so how, here's a question. How do I get started right away if I've never done this before? Uh, great question. I would say focus on these pillars. This, this is, oh, this is jumpy is what this is. There we go, focus on these governance pillars. The framework, create a JIRA project for governance and a, gov and a confluence space for governance. Focus on your structure. Who is it gonna be? You're going to need more than just you. The two people you're going to have to have to successfully implement governance is somebody that has administrative capability and somebody that has executive sponsorship. Governance is one of those things that you need to get authority for sometimes, and so you're not going to be able to do it on your own. But what you can do on your own is start to build out the framework of the ideas and then present that to somebody that could be an executive sponsor. Also, think about what some of your policies are. This can come from what are your biggest pain points, right? Uh, and then build that on the framework. If you need any help with this, obviously that's this is what we do, right? So reach out to me, reach out to us, ask us for help and, and we can help you out with that. Okay, great. Any other questions before we wrap up today? All right, I appreciate your attendance uh, and your attention. Uh, it's always a pleasure to do these webinars. Please go to our website and check out the upcoming webinars we have. We've got some fantastic webinars on on utilizing JIRA for business teams, uh, helping you understand JIRA's ITSM, Enterprise Service Management Tools, uh, cloud migration, what you need to know about the latest and greatest that's happening with Atlassian on cloud migration, all of those things are available. Uh, yeah, we've got another late question here. Is there a, uh, one source that you can recommend that provides Atlassian's recommended best practices? Well, that's a really general question. Um, I would say that the source I would recommend to you is the um, is that X, uh, that XBM uh, uh, sorry XBM YouTube channel. So let me let me pull it up here for you again. X, you just go to XBM YouTube, um, pull up our channel here. By the way, we have got a ton of videos out here, and and they are. I will say right now, 30 to 40% of the people that come to us and find out about us come to us through our videos. There's some videos out here that have over 100,000 views on them, okay? If you go to our playlists and go to the governance series, uh, some of the best practices that you're gonna see are going to be in here around governance. Uh, like this one right here that Brian Dar did is a fantastic one on JIRA best practices for growth. I would definitely recommend watching that video. Some of these are kind of lengthy. They're, they're, there's some content there. so. You know, get yourself a get yourself a glass of wine and in, 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 you know and and kind of kick back in in your lounge chair or whatever or something. Uh, it'll take some time. So that's uh, that's the best thing um, to to start with. I would also say a really great place to start is admin management. It seems to me that everybody that's dealing with governance issues, the biggest problem they have is they've got too many admins. Their database is a mess. Admin management is one of the most the biggest pain points and one of the best places to start. Okay, we are out of time. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, it's been my pleasure. Check out our website, come to our other webinars, check out our marketing events. I, I cannot tell you how fun our marketing events are. We have food that we send to people. It's, it's, it's great, you gotta check it out. Okay, um, I will talk to you all out there in the Atlassian ecosystem. Thank you all for joining this webinar. We'll take, take care and we'll talk to you soon.